All right, we're live. Hello. Awesome. Hi, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for being here, Mary. Welcome, everybody. This is day four of our virtual summit, talking all about keeping it cool during a pandemic. And today we've got Mary Breuer with Mary Breuer Photos on talking all about adjusting your business and pivoting where you need to. I know you're specifically going to talk about marketing and like mm -hmm. how, how we're also like feeling like, I don't know if I should market in this time. And you're going to give all of your insight on that too. So I'm so excited yeah. for this conversation today because I think a lot of people will benefit just yes. to hear what you're doing and how you're still killing it in your business. And you're, yesterday you're like, oh, I need to get you my description. I'm just got so many projects going on. Sorry. <laughs> late. I'm like, no worries. That's great. You have so many projects. So um, yeah. why don't you introduce yourself and tell us you can kick it off. Yeah. Actually, you know what I forgot to do is what? comment. Let us know you're here. Comment in the chat. Where are you? We've been doing this each day. Where are you in your house sitting and watching this? Are you in your kitchen? Are you in the bathroom on your toilet watching us? Are you in your office <laughs> sitting with your that's, kids? That's I don't where know. I do most of my marketing. Yeah, in the toilet? <laughs> yeah, that, of course. That's the number one tip. Tip yes, for the yeah. day. Marketing from the toilet. <laughs> so let us know, everybody. We want to know where you are. I'm going to pull up. I was going to say, I, I don't see the comments here, Alex, so you'll just, okay. you might have to read them to me. Um, I don't know if it's something I'm just not doing right or what. I am coming from my phone, and I don't know if that makes a difference. Or oh, it might. I will read the comments to you when they come through. I see Katie loved us. So uh, kitchen table, oddly enough, and from Green Bay, that's Katie. Uh, so she's watching us. We got a kitchen table. That's great. I'm in my office. I, since we opened the nest, I haven't um, used my office very much, but I'm back in my office, my beautiful office. So where are you, Mary? Um, I am actually, so this is actually a studio um, that I, we had for my husband because he, he someday, which probably will happen during this whole scenario, um, he's a musician. So he records, he's got an audio engineering degree. And yeah. so I set up a little studio for him here, but now I'm kind of taking it over <laughs> with nice. my lights and all of my stuff in here. Um, so yeah, it's just a teeny tiny little space, but I do have a window, which is something that's kind of a perk because I don't have a window at my studio that I edit in. Um, it's all, Ooh. you know, overhead lighting. So this is actually really nice. So. I bet you're like, oh my gosh, I feel so like, not winter depression now because I have got windows. <laughs> yes, yes, I do spend a lot of time. I have been spending a lot of time in here, so Good. it's been really nice to to do that. So yeah, awesome. Laura says that she's in her new office desk in her living room. Let's see, Jess is in her office. Awesome. All right, well, let's kick it off. Let's get started. I know you've got a lot to talk about, and I'm sure we could talk about this topic for hours so let's, <laughs> let's jam it back let's jam yes. back it full of content and and you betcha so, so a little bit of uh, it, a little bit about me is i'm a portrait photographer and videographer uh, my studio is uh downtown in the old main district so it's um by the old los banditos that unfortunately closed down um but there's a taco truck nearby anyways <laughs> <laughs> priority <laughs> Jess and I are frequents of Taco Burrito Mexico, which is a block away from the nest. So, oh, yeah, I haven't okay. tried that, but I'm kind of okay. N not tacos today. Okay. Um, but, anyways, <laughs> so, you know, really, somebody asked me once, like, who do you photograph or, or like, what's your target market? And I'm like, people who hate being photographed, that's me. Um, that's Those are my people. So, I really do mm -hmm. like to serve the insecure, um, is what I like to do. Um, so, anyways, but today I'm going to talk to you guys about, you know, pivots because, you know, I think we're all looking at this from the perspective of, holy crap, we've never experienced anything quite like this before. And I believe there is some truth to that, but I also believe that's false. The reason I believe that's false is because um, it's 
you know, businesses have been making pivots forever and ever and ever because technology and things continue to keep advancing. So regardless if it's a pandemic or not, how do you, I mean, take a look, ShopCo shut down, all mm-hmm. these other places, shut, Toys R Us shut down. And it's because they, these businesses refuse to make a pivot. <laughs> um, Kodak, right? You know what I mean? Yeah. They refuse Kodak. to make a pivot. Mm-hmm. So, but before we can start talking about, okay, what's the next step? Um, I think what you need to do is you need to do an assessment. You know, I think right now everybody is kind of going through a grieving process. Um, you know, I had a little bit more heads up on this because my husband's fun fact, he's a doomsday prepper. (laughs) So we had all of our supplies a month ago. Um, so anyways, (laughs) um, so I think I've had a little bit of an advantage because of this. Um, so I've had a little bit more time to experience the grief cycle, you know, which is shock, you know, first, and then it's denial. And then it's, you know, starting to move into the next phases of just like depression. And like, we're, we all experience this because our businesses are, you know, they're like a child to us. They're mm-hmm. our everything. Um, and it feels like we're losing it right now um, for a lot of people. So I think that before you can start to create, you, you really do have to figure out your financials. Like you, there's no room for you to think about marketing or, or how to start selling. And I think a lot of times businesses will jump to be like, Oh, let's do a sale on gift cards. Let's do this. Let's do that. Um, and what I want you to realize is that doing that before you figure out your financials is going to cause more damage than it will probably do good in the long run. Mm -hmm. And it might make you resentful. And the reason why I say that it's, you know, it's because you're making things out of desperation. So first of all, you stink, you smell bad. (laughs) Um, You smell really bad when you're desperate. Um, So you do need to to, to buckle down um, and to, to think to yourself, can my business sustain without income for the next two months? Can it? And if the answer is no, then you really should be thinking about, well, how can I create it to be sustainable? And it might not, you know, I it might be a loan. It might be, I have a credit card or it might be your emergency funds or mm. thankfully we've got taxes that are pushing things out. So if you've got money saved aside for taxes, you know, look at how much money is in your account. Can you sustain? And ask yourself those questions. Um, you know, another thing is too, is that, you don't always have to borrow money. I mean, it might mean you get a job at festival because right now that place is booming. <laughs> you know what right? I mean? So, yeah. so I think a lot of times we, we don't want to revert back to working for somebody else. Um, but you know, this could happen in any s- sort of situation where again, this technology could be changing and you are starting to lose income. So I think it's really important for you to just figure out like, okay, where am I? What cuts can I make? Because now you got to tighten up your shit. Ship. <laughs> shit. Sorry, shit. I meant to say shit, but I said shit, whatever. Um, anyways, um, but you really got to tighten things up and figure out where are you bleeding money. I think the number one place is that a lot of us bleed money is in subscriptions. You know, mm-hmm. what are you subscribed to? You know, do you have to have Netflix, Hulu and all those things? Or can I mean, I know right now people are like, yes, I need all of them. But do you really? You right. Know? Like, do you really? Um, so just trying to figure out where you can cauterize some of the bleeding in your business. This is a really good opportunity for you to do that, because, you know, before you were so busy, you don't even realize where you're bleeding at. OK, mm. you have that you know, tunnel vision. Have you can you give us an example of some places that you might have cut during this time? I had to lay off my employees. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they're they're filing for unemployment, I'm sure. Yep. And that wasn't, I mean, and the thing Mm -hmm. is, is that I have a great relationship with my employees. Um, You know, so that was the first cut. That was the biggest, biggest expense that I had. Um, So, you know, now it just means that I had to cut and do the work myself, um, which is something that, you know, I was doing before I had employees. So Mm -hmm. it's just, you know, it's a cut that we have to make in order to keep the the business sustainable and, and hear it. I'm not, you know, doing it just because this is the way it's going to be forever. It's more of like, this is just to make sure that we're going to get through um, the next round. The other thing, the the other thing too, is that um, 
this is a great opportunity for you to set up a plan. Uh, mm-hmm. you, you should have an emergency fund for your business and right. for your and for your home. Um, be, and the reason I'm talking financials and everybody's like, what does that have to do with marketing? Everything. It is everything. Because again, you can't create when you're when you're freaking out. Like it just everything you create will feel like desperate. It will feel panicky. It will feel like man, she's trying really, really hard, you know, yeah. and, and people don't need that right now. They, I know that the posts have been going around about, oh, support the business. And I, I 100% back that, but it's like, everybody's got so much on their plate as it is. What they need is a breath of fresh air. They need something else. You know what I'm saying? Right. Something else to, to, you know, we, we got to make lemonade out of these lemons, if you will. So, yeah. so uh, I could, I could just share. To, go ahead. I was just going to share quick what, what Jess and I did with the nest and our, and our co-founders, Sunny and Kayla, Jess and I had a conversation last week. It was the last week, the week before, I think it was last week with our landlord. Cause it was like, okay, well, if we have to close our doors, we need to have a plan because first of all, we're not paying ourselves yet. We're, we're in month three. Like we're not paying ourselves. Anything, yeah. We can't even cut that. And so we're like, Christine, is there any way you can give us some grace on our on our rent? Like if we can't pay this that month, you know, we'll still have to end up paying it. But she's like, yes, totally, whatever you need. But you guys need to get creative in how you're how you're supporting and the things you can do online. And so then, you know, actually we had this planned prior to talking to her, the virtual summit, but that was part of our getting creative and but we definitely looked at our schedule. I pulled all the numbers and was like, if we don't charge for April membership, we're losing this much money. You know, so bottom line. Yeah. And I think it's important to think about it in this, you know, kind of like an insurance agency does, you know, where they ask you those hard questions. Like if this happens, then what? And then if this happens, so that way you have the right coverage, mm-hmm. you know, for these types of things. Um, but yeah, I totally agree. Asking the your vendors, people that you have to pay, like your landlord or, um, you know, the other bookkeeping and things like that. I think we're all in this together. And so by just communicating and saying, listen, I'm not saying it's happening yet, or it is happening. And I need to know, you know, where can we make some cuts, you know, might mean that you have to do more bookkeeping on your end for the time being, but you're sitting around anyway. So, you know what I'm saying? It's that trade of time and everything that you're trying to get back. But yeah, I definitely feel like once you have that figured out, like, okay, we're good. I, I don't have to worry about, you know, things coming in or coming out. It clears your mind so that you can actually start getting more creative with your mind and, okay. and you're creating from a place, you know, of non-stress, you know, there's always going to be an element of stress, but if we can reduce that stress by just having a plan that helps immensely, helps immensely. So that takes me to step two, which is, and, and I think a lot of us are kind of, you know, I think a lot of businesses just today, are, I think it's official, everything's kind of closed down at this point. Um, it was kind of happening in waves. <laughs> right. Um, but personally call, I mean, I'm not talking about, if I get one more COVID-19 email, I think I'm going to flip out. <laughs> like I just, like, oh my gosh. Yeah. Here's how our business is handling this. And I think that that's good to do like, like through the masses, but I'm talking about the people that are currently on your list of being affected, you know, um, again, you've got an abundance of time. How crazy would it be for you to just call or text and be like, Hey, um, you know, this is going to be something that's happening, but before you even ask them or tell them what your plan is, ask them what's what's going on like what is challenging for you right now like Mm -hmm. tell us tell me about that and taking taking note because they're going to give you some clues it's part of the creative process they're going to give you some problems that you could possibly solve Mm. so so call or text mm -hmm. your clients or prospective clients to get clues on you know just talk to them and, and be humans right Yeah, exactly. Great marketing is always solving a problem. So for instance, here I go. Well, my problem is that I'm bored and I have nothing to do. I'm freaking out because I don't have anything to do. Yeah. (laughs) So it's like, okay, 
well, then here's a way that, you know, so there's a, there's an option, an opportunity for you right now to go ahead and create something for them to do. You yeah. know, here's a class you can, you know, so the online class, um, actually my employee, Madison, we, we're still staying in contact. She said her aunt sent her a scavenger hunt to drive around and take pictures of like a stop sign, a fire hydrant, this and like, and so she and her, her mom got in the car and they just took a drive trying to find these things, That's you know, awesome. like. <laughs> just yeah. something you know to do with your time um but they're going to give you some great clues you know when you ask them what's you know j- so just cut straight to the chase like what what is so challenging for you right now because you might be able to serve them in some way shape or form yeah uh that's great that you said that you're bored um so the nest we're hosting a a, a virtual netflix party on on Saturday night to watch Brene Brown. So that's for our members. <laughs> Just a little like <laughs> thing that we're trying to do. Like, okay, members, you can't exactly. see us, but here we are. Have a Netflix party. Yes. yes. So the, the next thing I want to talk about is that, you know, you have other talents. Um, and that's why it's so important to know what these clues are, because, you know, this hasn't been your job, your only job. You know, I, I, there's so many things. I can start listing them off to you that I've done. I have a experience being a, a baker. So I used to be a baker and candy maker. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I also worked in pharmacy. And then I worked as a respiratory therapist. And I still have my license there. So, you know, I kind of have these, like, back pocket talents. I play guitar. I write lyrics. You know, like, all sorts of different little things going on. And I used to always think it was you know, annoying because I could never be good, like the best at one thing. I was always just good at a lot of things. But Mm -hmm. I think for a lot of business owners, that's actually a huge trait. It's a huge trait to be good at multiple things because it makes you more adaptable. You know, Mm -hmm. it makes you more adaptable, makes you more flexible. Um, You know, you got to learn how to surf the wave of of life. And so you can transition and move into these different avenues quickly. Um, But it's something that I feel like one or two things you could either use it to create more of an income stream use it to you know just because i'm not teaching um or because i'm not taking photos i could teach people how to make candies different candies and because i'm using video so i'm using my equipment i'm using video you know to be able to teach people some of this stuff how to make chocolate covered strawberries you know and just different things that they might not know of um to entertain them so I think the number one mistake, though, that Americans make and entrepreneurs especially make is that we put all of our income streams into one basket. You know, Mm -hmm. we just we're it's kind of like stock. (laughs) You don't put all of your money into one stock. You spread it out and you have multiple income streams. And I think that that's a really big advantage because the people who have online courses and stores and rental properties like they're not hurting at all because if one thing shuts down, you know, they've got other revenue coming in somewhere else, you mm-hmm. know? And I think that that's true, you know, with people who have jobs in factories and things like that, I think it's a lesson that we can learn from this is that we can't put all of our talents and eggs in one basket. We've got to have multiple ways that we can make money. Um, and we have the ability to do it with the internet, which is so helpful. <laughs> so, yeah. so helpful to be able to do that. So, so what yeah. are you doing? Um, as far as so a your... couple of things that as far as doing other things. Yeah. So I've been I've been trying to get the time to put my photography course online. That'll be published by the end of today. So I have um an iPhone class, like Granny Tog, essentially, um, and the demonstrations for t- t- showing people how to use their iPhone to take, you know, pictures better. So that's going to be something that's coming. And then I'm going to move to the next step of teaching more advanced photography for people who want to take it to the next level. So I'll be spending a lot of my time doing that right now is, is that. offering that. And then my fun project is um, the six feet apart. So I'm doing a documentary type of uh, series, photo series, and uh, and actually really cool that this, uh, let me just tell you, it's awesome because I just got paid a thousand dollars. I'm going to possibly, now it's not 100%, but they offered me a thousand dollars for that little clip I took of my grandma um, to be able to use it in a commercial for a different company. 
like just it like fell from the sky. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So you know, actually, and tell, I just, everybody like, tell everybody that's watching what what you're even talking about because I know what you're talking about. That's amazing. Okay. So the Six Feet Apart project, it's a, it's a personal project because I feel as a photographer and a videographer, I have this duty to, to civilization, to document history. Um, and so I'm volunteering my time and I'm going to people's houses. I'm not going in them. They have to stay in their house, but I'm shooting through their windows to kind of get an insider's look at like what the heck people are doing um, in this time in their home. Are they eating more meals around the table? Because I think the media is, is doing a really good job of giving us tons of information and updates that's all great and it's you know annoying (laughs) um so I'm trying to find the good in this you know I'm trying to find that and then also it's my research project because I'm looking for challenges because that's part of the I'm asking people three questions what's been the most challenging what's been the most positive thing that's happened and what do you hope to learn or what do you want to remember from it um so I'm going to be sharing that with my audience to give some people some entertainment to be able to see you know they're not alone oh she's okay I want to make sure that I'm getting and um you know the frontline workers here, you know, because they have a different type of stress right now. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's all in the name of history. So it's a fun project for me to keep my skills active, um, for me to learn new skills, because I don't typically shoot on site anymore. Um, I used to, and obviously shooting through a window has its challenges. (laughs) So so it's keeping me kind of up into my own game um, to do it. But yeah, so that's an all- voluntary so people can sign up if they want to we still got spots open for people to just sign up for us to stop by that's awesome and come be a peeping tom and yesterday <laughs> you went to grandma's Tell your neighbors. Home. yesterday you went to a, your grandma's nursing home and shot photos of her and oh that's what you're talking about yeah. well still i mean it's all that's yeah that's what you were talking about that's what's yeah. in the commercial reel Potential. Yes. So I took it's and it was the video that I took. So I just took a video of Harmony. They were she was trying to like, you know, because we couldn't hear each other through the mm-hmm. window. So she, they were trying to communicate using their hands, like doing hearts. And so she was, you know, putting her hands together and then she was waving and it was the sweetest little video on the entire planet. And so it really pulls at your heartstrings. But um, yeah, so uh, it's just through connections that I have, but somebody picked up on it and was like, hey, um, my, uh, that she was doing, uh, uh, she researches on Facebook and Instagram for talent, you know, for companies for marketing. And they right. were looking for ways that COVID has been, in, you know, changing the way of communication right now. So yeah, but yeah, I'm excited. Okay. Uh, we, we don't know for sure if it's going to make the cut, but if it does. Oh, <laughs> So go like yeah. her, go like her page now. Okay, so keep going. Your next tip. Okay. That was a side tangent, um, but I thought it needed to no, be that's shared. okay. <laughs> yeah, so those, I mean, those are just a few things that I'm working on, but um, you ha- you're an expert. You're the entrepreneur. So take advantage of the wave. You know, this is a wave. Take advantage of it. When you're, um, when you're able to be, like I said, flexible, you, you can just, you can really win. So I wanted to talk to you about a couple of other companies, um, that have been doing some things and doing it before even the pandemic happened. But I'll first talk about this fancy, uh, restaurant in California. And actually my mentor shared this with me and I'm like, Oh, wow, that actually is really cool idea to think about it. Um, you know, it doesn't mean that you have to stop what you're doing, but maybe it means you need to revamp the services or change them up a little bit um, to make things more servable. So people are obviously like holding on to their money like this right now, mm-hmm. and they're not, not wanting to let any of it go. So luxury kind of is out the window at this point. <laughs> like, you know, just like you're making those luxury cuts in your business, people are making those luxury cuts in their home. So one restaurant in California was like a high end luxury restaurant, you know, realized that this was happening. And so they're like, we know that you don't need luxury right now, you need comfort. And so they totally changed their menu to burgers and bagels and delivery and takeout. And um, just really? completely changed it. Yep. Just completely changed it. Just like that. They just changed their menu and they're like, well, you don't need a fancy steak. You need simple, fast, um, yeah. you know, comfort food and cheap, cheaper. And that's right. the other thing too. 
So they just totally temporarily changed their their menu and their business model a bit um, to serve their clientele where they're at versus being, you know, not just, I mean, I'm sure people are still buying gift cards and things like that, but they've transitioned things a bit more to be able to, to meet the needs. But a couple of other businesses and fun facts that I want to share with you guys is obviously we all know Netflix started as DVDs being shipped to you and yep. now they've obviously moved to online streaming and they're probably just sitting back like happy as clams right now because everybody is like using Netflix. <laughs> right. I also was thinking about Zoom, right? How many people are jumping on Zoom? Mm-hmm. So. so that's totally something. Western Union, it started as a telegram service. And obviously with the phones coming out, they started instead of just transferring messages, now they transfer money. So it's like they're very innovative in that way. Mm -hmm. Um, Nintendo, this is a good one. Nintendo started as a card game back in the 1880s. Did you know that? No, I did not. Yep, it was a card game. And now look at them, Nintendo Switch, Portable. They're totally sitting pretty right now. Um, (laughs) And my favorite is Play-Doh. And I think it's the most relatable because, you know, a lot of people are talking about our economy going into this depression, right? That this is going to be huge for the economy. So Plato began making um, some post-depression wall cleaner in the 1930s. And it was, it was designed to clean like the, it was a wall cleaner designed to clean the black residue that the coal heaters left on walls. Okay. Then gas heaters came into place. And so there wasn't, you know, the residue that was being left on the wall um but they one of the like company's creators sister-in-law is a kindergarten teacher and he found out she was using it in her classroom for arts and crafts to make ornaments no way i did not yes. know that so it was like probably just white right before yeah use it was a- and then yep. one so then they made it all these different colors oh my gosh i didn't even yep. know that it's- Isn't that crazy? So, you know, you think about these things and it's like uh, some of them happen during, you know, obviously trying times, but other things just happen just because people evolve. Like we're, you know, we're constantly, you know, growing into technology. So you have to really, you know, think about your business five, 10 years from now versus just getting through today. And again, that tunnel vision, I think is something that we're, you know, this is a wake up call for a lot of us. Like we we've had our blinders on because we've got clients, we're doing this, we're doing that, we're doing this, we're doing that. And you don't even realize that the world is changing around you because you don't have time. And so a lot of people are like, why do you focus so much on marketing? I mean, you're a photographer, but I market 90% of the time. (laughs) So you got to pay attention to those things. So I just made a list for myself and, and I think you could too. And, and, you know, of different ways that your business could branch out. So for example, obviously photography and online courses, um, video, I hired staff to kind of take over the brand division to start offering video for people, for businesses to make it cheap and make it more affordable for small businesses to fill that, you know, gap, because I did my research. I said, what is challenging for you right now I don't have the time I don't have the resources like I don't I can't even figure this out so we solve that problem um you know my husband you know start looking at your family members like what can y'all do today like can you do something (laughs) like (laughs) so my daughter and I made a YouTube video you know you know doing you know fun stuff like that and my husband's in audio so we can you know I could do a live with him playing music and um, you know, he can play online for tips. Um, so yeah, so it's just <laughs> like, so I can, I can keep rolling with income sources here. Um, yeah. but yeah, so look at your family. I mean, they might have something, a skill or something that they haven't been able to do either and give it the opportunity to, to do some things. So I think the thing that you need to realize is you don't shut down. Our community needs us and we need to stand up and stand firm. And, you know, big corporations don't serve the way we can. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, they just don't. They they're, can't they're, easily, right? Yeah. No, we're, we're infiltrated. We're, we're infiltrated. These are our neighbors. Um, these are the people, you know, we don't live in California. We live here. We live and serve in our community. So really, honestly, this is our opportunity to shine. This is our opportunity to make a huge impact and be like, you know what? 
I might not be getting any income right now, but I'm still going to keep serving anyways, you know, and that's the kind of businesses that you have, um, you know, look busy, even when you're not Mm -hmm. look busy, the best tip I can give you just look busy. I can't even tell you how many free shoots I've done in my career just because I wanted a bum on my seat. You know, I wanted to make sure because you're, if you're looking busy, if you're staying busy, you're posting and you're staying consistent, you know, do behind the scenes, shoot, you know, product. If you have that, um, take the photography class so you can learn how, <laughs> like, <Yeah. laughs> you know, there's all sorts of ways that you can continue to keep serving and look busy. Um, even when, even when you're not truly busy, um, with paying clients, it doesn't mean just because it's a paid thing doesn't mean you're not busy. You know, there's mm-hmm. so many jobs we do that we don't get paid for. I mean, like my dishes, I don't get paid for that. <laughs> like, <laughs> in the day, but I wish I did. <laughs> so I wanted to share the four E's that I like to use. And then, um, you know, so educate, entice, entertain, and engage. So educate, you know, get more specific. This is a great time for you to get super specific about your products and your services. You know, like give us the little nitty gritty details. How is it made? You know, I could sit there and be like, oh, well, you know, this book here that we sell one of these books, you know, and, and it's really cool, but I could get into the details of like the backstory of the company that makes these books and start giving even more insights on why I chose it and why I think it's great. You know, it's a great investment. So there's that option. Um, so you're people getting into you know. marketing stuff right now. Yes. Marketing. We're, we're moving into marketing now. Um, so um, thank you for clarifying. I just keep going. (laughs) So teach people what you know. Teach people your reasons why. Okay. Um, And that comes into enticing. I think we, this is a great time. Your clients are free. Ask them for testimonials. Mm. Ask them for, like, give me a testimonial. If there's anything you could do for me right now, it would be a testimonial. Talk about your experience it, so I can share it and, and dig into that why a little bit more, you know, mm-hmm. um, and, and really, you know, start kind of tilling your garden here a little bit, right? Get it ready for planting seeds. Love it. Next thing I have, you know, with the entertain. So volunteer, like I, like, again, I'm working on that project six feet apart, volunteering my time and my talents to the community. Uh, This is my time to shine as a business owner to, to let people know that this is not just about money. This is about my service, um, Mm -hmm. my commitment to the community, Um, incorporate your family, like I was saying, and utilize, you know, different talents that you have and share it with your audience. You know, they might not realize that, I used to be a baker, you know, and it's just so cool, you know, (laughs) it's interesting, Um, you know, engaging. So talking with them, do a live challenge, go live. Um, Think of another challenge. One of my photographer friends challenged um, all of her clients to, to take a video of themselves jumping on their bed and sending it to her. Um, so the whole, like their whole family and people are jumping on their bed and, and, you know, tagging each other, um, in the comments. So is there something fun like that, that you can do to get people treasure hunt, scavenger hunt? I don't know. Um, something like that, where you can bide people's time and keep them engaged and interacting with you. Um, Mm -hmm. again, when you're doing this, you know, ask people directly, even on Facebook, what is the most challenging thing you're facing right now? What's the most positive thing? You know, these are things that you can ask your audience and they're going to tell you. Mm-hmm. I mean, everybody's kind of just sitting around and, and waiting to, to talk about it. Yeah. Um, but the last thing I, I, I want to say about this, go ahead. I was just going to say, you know, I, I struggle with posting stuff too, because I don't want to add to the noise. You know, there's so much out there about COVID-19 and, and coronavirus and everybody's kind of just sick of hearing about it. And like, oh, we're doing this because of coronavirus or whatever. And so like adding to the noise is where I struggle and get hung up with, okay, I don't want to add to the noise. Any advice for that? So that's, yeah. Yeah. So that's where you could be more creative in taking the initiative and flipping the script and being like the most challenging part for this for me has been X, Y, Z. And so are giving them a resolution, you know, so showcasing what you're doing 
as a business owner with your own family. My own family have been setting the table together. We've been doing this together and doing this together. Um, so you're actually in a roundabout way, you're still asking them the question, but you're showing them the resolution at mm -hmm. the same time. So you're, you're able to then ask, um, but in a roundabout way that doesn't feel like, <sighs> <laughs> you know, they're like, oh, wow, like, I, you know, because maybe you're doing something that they wouldn't have thought of, or that they are is piquing their interest in a different way. And then I think the other thing, too, is that because I know that not every business has the capacity to call all of their customers, you know, they're, that's like impossible. Um, so doing something like this would be a little bit more tangible, because you can kind of feed the masses, if you will. But if you do have a business kind of like I do, or I'm sure you do, where you have a handful of clients that you're working with at a smaller scale, um, this would be something where you could be like, hey, would you mind if I share something, you know, share your what you're doing on mm -hmm. my page? Yeah. You know, oh, one of my clients yeah. told me that they were doing this. Right. They can give, I mean, they'll give you content. Right. <laughs> and so it's not about you. Here, right. Yeah. Yeah, they do. Everybody likes to talk about themselves. So. Um, I think it's really a great way to capitalize on people who have extra time on their hands right now and collect content right now. Um, but yeah, I want to end with that. Your brand is you. Um, and there is so much more to you than the product or services that you sell. Um, and again, recapping, don't put all your talents in one baskets. Um, so take advantage of the, the gift of time. That's so good. So good, Mary. If anybody has any questions, feel free to drop them in the chat. I know that um, Jess asked, how do we not put judgment around making tough decisions? Not sure what at what point she dropped that in the chat. but Oh, take making judgment on tough. I guess I, can I, I, I want to follow that up with a question. Are you talking specifically about... Um, like feeling judgment on yourself or others judging you, I guess is what I'm looking at. I think she's probably judging herself, knowing Jess. Okay, knowing Jess. So yeah. feeling like, oh my gosh, I'm a failure because I have to ask for help. Yeah. Is that, I think, is that kind of what that's it's going example. at? That's an example. I wouldn't say that's what she's okay. thinking, but. I, I honestly believe right now that um, we, we make so many assumptions inside of our heads that, you know, we, we play it out. Like we give ourselves anxiety, like, Oh my gosh, you, you, you think about this. Like you have a tough conversation. You need to have a tough conversation. How many of you sit there and lay in your bed and you're like, okay, this is what they're going to say. And then this is what I'm going to say. And then this is what they're going to say. And then this is what I'm going to say. And then it's like, you keep going back and forth and having this argument with yourself and you beat yourself up when, you know, I think it's good to kind of play a little bit of role play, if you will, to kind of get worst case scenario, which is always going to be no, <laughs> that's the worst case scenario. Um, so just remember that this is, especially when you're talking things like, um, you know, working with my employees and stuff, I, I, when I let them know that I couldn't, you know, keep them on for the rest of March and possibly into April, um, I said, you know, I, it doesn't mean that I don't value you. Um, and I didn't feel any judgment at all. I, I, but I was honest, you know, I even cried a little bit and was like, you know, this is really painful for me, um, to have to do this because, I, we just, we're getting our momentum going, you know, like it felt like yeah. things were on a really good path. Um, but I, I really don't, I never really had a fear of judgment from them because I have, you have to think everybody right now currently is like hoping for some grace, you know, yeah. they might be hoping for some grace and the best way to hope for grace is to give grace, um, mm -hmm. you know, to be able to kind of treat people how you want to be treated. So you know, you gotta let that go. You can't, you can't hold on to those judgments because I think that's just your own like mean girl talking to you um, and telling you that you should feel bad about this. So well I, I don't think that's, I don't think that that's true. <laughs> I love that. That is so true. Yeah, I mean, what you're saying is so true. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much, Mary. This has been such a good conversation, and I, I think that anybody whether you're a business owner or not, like something was said here that you can take away. So thank you so much for bringing your thoughts to the conversation in our virtual summit. It's been so fun. If you liked this video, 
um, definitely give it a love, a share, a comment, tag somebody that, that should definitely see this. Mary, where can everybody find you and follow along with what you're doing? I know you got a lot of channels. So, uh, face <laughs> a little bit. Facebook is probably the number one um, resource. That's Facebook and Instagram are my top two. So Mary Breuer photos on Facebook, and then it's Mary Breuer photos on Instagram as well. Um, you can also visit the learn more about the actual um, six feet apart project by going to Mary Breuer photos forward slash six dash feet dash apart um and that's so if you want to get more information or if you are interested in signing up but um to take part in it it's like i said it's all voluntary voluntary on my part voluntary on yours um just a way for us to to document the what's going on in our world right now because one day we're gonna have to tell our grandkids about it um so it'll be really really it's neat to, to be in a textbook yeah just yeah, like number exactly 11. crazy yep so it is crazy. Yeah. So we have been putting this on. This is day four of our virtual summit. We've got the rest of the week. So three more days. So we're so excited to talk to Pam at Green Frog Yoga. Just get a little bit of movement and flow into your, your days. And then we're talking to Ashley on Friday. Who are we talking to tomorrow? Oh my gosh. I'm drawing a huge blank. Um, is it Pam tomorrow? Today's, is it today, Wednesday, or Thursday? Oh, my gosh. Tuesday. Today. today <laughs> Tuesday. Who knows anymore? There is no oh, time. It's to, <laughs> oh, we're talking to Elise tomorrow. That's right. Jess is talking to Elise tomorrow about, like, reconnecting yourself through, with yourself through the social distancing. So that should be a great conversation because I think there's some loneliness out there, right? We need, some, we need our oh, people. Yeah. Um, and yeah. then Pam's on Thursday about movement um, and mindfulness. And then Ashley's on day seven on Friday talking about health, best practices in your health and, and where to go from here. So we're so excited for this. And make sure you check out the videos from our days prior. And it's, it's been great content. We actually have had some people reach out and say, okay, this has been great content. How can we support you? On the bottom of our virtual summit page, we did set up a way that you guys can give if you want to support the nest. Of course, I mentioned in this video that we're not charging our members in the month of April. We still have bills to pay, and um, and we're just giving an option. If people want to give, they can. Of course, it's not tax deductible because we're not a nonprofit, but we do appreciate any support and all support that we can get to keep our doors open or reopen in May, hopefully. So or whenever for that matter. So yeah. anyway, yeah. thanks so much for being here, Mary. This was awesome. And yes. um, yeah, we'll, we'll look it was forward great to it. It was great to be here. Thanks, you guys. If you have any questions, you just let me know. Yes. I and got I'll lots of time. <laughs> yeah. I'll take all of your channels in the chat and um, also put the link to your Six Feet Apart video as well. Awesome. Or, Thank you so much. Okay. All right. Talk to you soon. Thanks so much. Bye. Bye.